Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this evening's planning board hearing. Um, it's Tuesday, September 13th, 7 p.m. We're in Cahill Auditorium. Uh, let the record uh, show that we have a full quorum, full member present today. Um, so we can get right underway. Our first public, our first public hearing is not until. Uh, member Grove, would you like to say something? Bringing it up, uh, if you have an illegal membership, I'm not sure you can have legal votes. And I'm wondering if Miss Tucci Rossi has been in touch with town council. Okay, sure, we can. Um, well, I'm going to jump. I'm just. I was just going to note that the public hearings um, are not starting until 7:15. So, as we customarily do, we will jump into the old slash new business section of our agenda. Um, and we can address um, your comments. So I guess a comment to the staff at the last meeting, Member Grove had brought up a comment with regards to um, status of uh, planning board members um, and had requested that um, town, town council be, um, I guess, asked about the status of that. Do we have an update or is that something we should put on the agenda? Just looking for some guidance on that. Uh, yes, if I may. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yes, there was a comment made at the last meeting uh, by Member Grove. Uh, Member Grove has had extensive discussions about this topic with the Town Council, including uh, Crystal uh, Huff and also Nicole Taub. I updated her uh, on the last meeting, uh, and Crystal is actually out on maternity leave now, and she's uh, said, you know, don't put that on, on the next agenda. Uh, we'll take it under advisement and follow up. Okay. Um, so that is something that we may have on a future agenda, it sounds like. Um, Potentially. Okay, so that is under review by town council. Correct. All right. Um, the next item on our agenda is a discussion with regards to the master plan update. I will note that I was at the farmer's market on Saturday for a little while. Um, there was a, a booth that town council had set up, which also had counselors and um, master plan information at. I thought it was great. Um, there were a lot of people that came out. I think we had um, about 50 people or so stop and actually take uh, part of that, take play, do the role, the um, activity that we had at the, at the event. Um, and then we also, our survey closed last Friday that we were advertising for several months throughout the summer. I think we had a pretty good response on that. I'm sure the director can let us know a little more information regarding those two events. Um, so I'll turn that over to her, and then we can touch base on um, the upcoming events. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, yep, so we're, we finished up the survey last week. Um, we were kind of doing a push the last week. Um, the numbers that I have as of last week, I don't have a final number yet, um, was 1,500 completed um, surveys, which is, which is a, 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 a number that we really should be, should be proud of here in Braintree. Um, the meeting in the box is still open. Uh, I handed out a couple kits. I was also at the farmer's market um, with the chair. Um, Connor Murphy, our assistant director, was with us too. Um, and we handed out some meeting in the boxes there. About eight of them have been turned in already. Um, and I know about 20 that are kind of out there, like queued up to happen. Um, so that's still going. The meeting in the box is open until October 14th. If anybody has any questions or would like a printed kit in a full size map, they can reach out to me um, at the office, shoot me an email, give me a call. Um, and then we have our uh, next master plan steering committee is next Thursday, the 22nd. Um, and the next community forum is October 15th. Um, still, um, we're still ironing out sort of the format of that and, and looking to get a room. So we'll have some update, uh, on, updates on that in the near future as well. So we just, again, continue to, people, continue to encourage people to reach out with questions, visit our website. All of the materials are posted up on the website. If you missed a meeting or you want to get up to speed on the project, plenty of information there. Um, that it could allow uh, anybody interested to do that. I also want to thank uh, Member Croa. I know that she had shared some of my posts and things um, through the chamber, which I think is definitely tapping into a population that, um, and a group cohort that we don't um, interact with as much as we should be. 
um, and, and that helped also bring in, bring in some numbers on the surveys. So um, when I do send things, just you know, forward it to people you know, tell a person, tell a friend, screenshot it to somebody. Um, you know, the more people that have the information, the more people that share it. Um, and I've expressed you know, to some individuals that any opportunity you have to make a personal connection with somebody and have dialogue, um, I find that to be far more effective than just telling somebody or handing them something to do. The interest starts, the questions start, and sort of the ideas uh, really start flowing in these sort of personal connections related to, uh, to the master plan. So those are the updates. Um, for this evening, we will be moving into um, the public review of the existing conditions report. I have a few emails in my inbox. Um, I just want to read those before I get ahead of myself uh, from the consultant. Uh, but nonetheless, we're very excited and um, we just continue to try to engage and, and get input. Uh, we did receive input from about 50 people uh, at our little mini activity that we had um, on Saturday, um, and um, we're just reaching, touching base with our consultant um, just to gauge capacity so that we can reproduce that um, exercise for, for some other events. So if there are any board members that know they're going to be somewhere, and there could be you know, 20, 30 people, even 10 people, um, if you're interested in any materials or any assistance to try to engage, uh, just reach out to me and we can provide those. Great, thank you. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Um, we do have a couple minutes, so I think while we're on the topic of the master plan, um, do any of the board members have any questions or comments or insight on anything you've heard around town with regards to the master plan or um, I guess any thoughts while we're on the topic waiting for 715 to be upon us? I know the surveys closed, so are the best ways to participate coming to the meetings and the meeting in a box, or are there other avenues of people in an email, or what would be the best way if there's yeah. any additional comments? Yeah, so um, for our, quote, summer engagement, the mm -hmm. survey is completed. There could be um, uh, additional surveys in the future, um, but even if it's just a general comment, People email me all the time. I just print them up and I and I make sure that they're in a folder. When I get a little group, you know, I, I scan them off uh, to the consultant. Honestly, really, any forms are appropriate. Uh, but the meeting in the box, um, I have to say, at first, I was kind of like, "Ooh, is this going to be intimidating? Is this going to be?" But when you actually kind of look at it and break it down, um, it is pretty low key and very user friendly. And there's really no like right or wrong way to do it, even if you had like a small like family dinner and there was five or six people or a larger group, uh, it is football season. I did speak to a couple people that said, oh, well, I'm getting together with all the guys. Um, we did get significantly less males taking the survey than females. So maybe we can, you know, do a meeting in the box sort of uh, kickoff and set that up next to the nachos and, and, and wings. Um, but even if there was 15 people and everybody wrote one thing like on a page, yeah. like, you know, pass it around. Um, I just find that um, any forms are really acceptable and d pe different people like to express themselves differently. So I would <laughs> focus on um, the meeting in the box now. And then if there's somebody that you're speaking with or that reaches out to you and they just, you know, well, I just want to talk, you know, just, just give them my number or my email. Um, and any kind of uh, format is, is totally acceptable. Call, email, come by. Okay. Anybody else? I have a call. Okay, <clears throat> Member Makami. Um, I had looked at all the material, which is quite a lot, and <laughs> to everyone's credit, uh, there's a lot of material. So what I'd be interested in, I, I, having not gone to any of these meetings, is do we have a halfway point um, summary of what the key issues would be? So what and, we... And not, not, you know, I know we have to look at the whole thing and not to get ahead of ourselves or tilt anything one way, but, uh, you know, I'd be interested in, you know, what are the key challenges, call them challenges then. Yeah. So uh, to, to, through the chair to Member Makami's uh, question and comment, so the existing conditions report is really like the meat that we have right now. That's 
that's sort of like the data doc and sort of what we've heard from people thus far. And we're starting to see some common themes around open space, transportation, housing. Um, so that document um, was in a draft format and we, we provided some commentary on that um, in edits mostly just to, I mean, I, I often find it impressive how these consultants can come and put together this report and like it's, like I've been here 20, almost 20 years and like the amount of material that they gather. Um, so that is really the deliverable right now that we would focus on. You will get some communication regarding that probably by the end of the week. Um, and then I would suggest um, either like reading the minutes or watching the videos. All the mm -hmm. videos are on um, the website as well. Um, and those are really good to kind of, um, you'll be able to see the presentations from the consultants and then the questions and comments both from the Master Plan Steering Committee members as well as the members in attendance, uh, public in attendance at those as well. Okay. Yep. And I think just as a, Member Mikami, as a follow-up to your question, I think um, the existing conditions report, which will shortly be made public, I think will have a good summary of pretty much a third of the effort that we've done so far. We're now into the second, second third, so we're working, I think, more on visioning and, you know, there'll be like, there's an executive summary in the mm. existing conditions report. So there should be some ways to kind of summarize what, what we've been doing, because it is a lot to go back and try to rehash some of the meetings, but I think that might be a good resource to check out when it's available. Um, we still have a couple more minutes. We will be taking up at 7.15 our first new public hearing. Um, so until then, uh, we'll just kind of sit tight and then get underway. The first public hearing that we're going to be opening this evening is 575 Quincy Avenue, file 22-08, site plan review for court car dealerships as the applicant. The applicant wants to come forward and start setting up um, for the hearing. We can, um, while you're doing that, if I could just ask staff to please read into the record um, the notice of public hearing. Absolutely, Madam Chair. Notice is given by the Planning Board on the provisions of Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 40A, Section 11, the Braintree Zoning Ordinance, Chapter 135, Article 1, 
5, 6, 7, 8, 11, 12, and 14 that the public hearing will be conducted on Tuesday, September 13th, 2022 at 7.15 p.m. in Braintree Town Hall. The Planning Board will consider a site plan review application from the applicant quirk car dealerships. The applicant is proposing to construct a 26,480 square foot building to accommodate a full service motor vehicle automobile dealership. The project also includes utility stormwater, parking, lighting, and landscaping improvements. The site is 39.06 acres and has an address of 575 Quincy Avenue, is zoned Highway Business District, and within the 100-year floodplain zones AE and VE, as shown on Assessor's Plan 3048, Plot 3. Thank you. Yeah, but, yep, go ahead, go ahead. Good evening, Madam Chair, uh, members of the Planning Board, Frank Marinelli, and pleased to appear this evening on behalf of the Quirk Car Companies and Principal Dan Quirk. Uh, with me is Cameron Campbell, who is our project engineer from DeSalle Burke, and also uh, Walter White, who is a consultant for Quirk. Uh, Tonight, we propose a 26,480 26, square foot uh, new uh, dealership uh, known as Quirk Genesis, Genesis of Braintree. Genesis is a luxury product, and currently, uh, Genesis is operating at 411 Quincy Avenue. Uh, back in th this summer, we uh, got a class one license to renovate the former uh, Super Shine Car Wash at 411 Quincy Avenue, and so that's where Cork Genesis is temporarily located. That's about a 4,000 square foot building, and this is a 26,480 square foot state of the art uh, dealership building that will be the permanent home of Cork Genesis, and it's situated on a three and a half acre site which is part of a 39-acre parcel, which is the Braintree side of the, of the former shipyard. So this is a portion, uh, about one-tenth the portion of the 39-acre site that is parcel three on assessor's map uh, number 3048. Uh, just by way of background, um, as the board knows, Mr. Quirk has operated uh, in the town of Braintree for over 40 years. Uh, we have, he's grown the company uh, since 1979 to 15 dealerships, uh, employing over 1,200 people at dealerships in Quincy, Braintree, Marshfield, Dorchester, and Manchester, New Hampshire. Uh, consistently named as one of the nation's best Chevrolet and Ford dealers. So this is a, as I said, a luxury product uh, that we'll be bringing to the southeast, southwest corner of the 39-acre parcel. So I'm just going to um, go through the plans uh, with the board. If I could, I have to take this with me, right? Yeah. So what this shows is the uh, the elevation from uh, Quincy Avenue, and uh, this is the sales side of the building. Uh, so this is what you'll see from Quincy Avenue as you travel down Quincy Avenue uh, from north to south. Uh, and then this is, shows the context of the layout, the three and a half acres, which is part of the overall 39 acres. So this is the, the Braintree side of the former shipyard en encompasses, I said, 39 acres about uh, 13 acres is wet open space, part of the wet basin, and then there's about 26 acres that's up. So the site is this three and a half acres right here in the southwesterly corner of the 39 acre parcel. This is part of decision number 1308. Uh, in 2013, as part of the class one storage that occurs on the former shipyard site. Uh, we have about over 1,300 spaces here, and we have a security gatehouse here. So a security gatehouse, which is currently here, it'll be moved to where this is shown here. So the security gatehouse is down here, was approved by 13-08, 
and it'll be moved in an easterly direction for that other approved activity that occurs on the site. And the dealership will be situated right here. The dealership, uh, 26,480 square feet, is comprised of the following. You have the sales area that uh, faces Quincy Avenue, which is actually this way. So this is the sales area facing Quincy Avenue. And then you'll have, uh, as you come in off of Hill Avenue, you'll have the ability to drive into a service uh, building, and there's adequate stacking here in the service, service building and protected from the elements. And then you flow into the service here, which is comprised of approximately 15 service bays. So you have sales with the glass elevation that we showed uh, facing Quincy Avenue. You have the beginning of the service, service area right here where you pull into service, which is, which is shown right here. And then you, you flow right into the service, the 15 service bays. So that's, that's the layout of uh, sales and service. Sales is approximately 11,189 square feet. Service is 15,200 square feet. So it's, that's about the 26,480. Sales requires one parking space per 250. Service, one parking space per 500. The total parking requirement is 76 parking spaces. We have 199 parking spaces on the three and a half acres. So. The, every element of zoning, dimensional, and density requirements is met. There's no variances. It's a use by right, and uh, it fits very nicely in that corner. This is the landscape plan, and the landscape plan shows uh, perimeter landscaping with approximately 56 trees, 59 shrubs, and about 186 ground cover uh, and perennials, so very generously landscaped. This is a, uh, a zoom of that three and a half acre site, uh, again showing compliance with zoning, all of the dimensional and density requirements, compliance with parking, compliance with open space. The site is existing pavement, as the board knows, and has been for decades. So when we create the green belt, we're actually removing pavement and creating 25% open space. Uh, the, there is a traffic report that's also been filed which shows that uh, it's one new car every two to three minutes and it has no impact at all on the level of service. So, so that's also addressed uh, in the materials on file. Uh, Stormwater is, is improved with um, and, and Cameron can explain and answer any questions on stormwater, but there's new catch basins, there's new uh, runoff treatment, uh, and that'll tie into the existing drainage, which then uh, has an outfall uh, to the wet basin. So there's stormwater improvements, there's open space improvements, and um, a luxury product and several million dollars investment in the commercial highway business zone. So I'll leave that up, and uh, we know that there's been a peer review, um, and then there were responses with the stormwater peer review, but um, we feel that everything has been addressed, and uh, we're happy to answer any questions that the board or the public may have. Great. Thank you very much. Um, as we customarily do, um, if I could just ask for staff to give an overview of the staff report, and um, then I also, looks like our peer review consultant is here with us this evening, so we'll give them a chance to kind of give an overview of the work that they did, but um, if you want to go first, Connor, that'd be great. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, staff report speaks to the site plan review application. Um, as explained by Attorney Marinelli, the site's access by Hill Ave. Um, it's quite honestly substantial improvement to the area you know, along that corridor at the end of Quincy Avenue. Um, staff has a couple general comments in regards to the submitted application. Um, most of it has to do with landscaping and the entrance on Hill Avenue. Uh, the plans submitted depict that the landscaping will end right at the curb cut. Staff has a concern that 
you know, we're gonna be putting in a brand new site at this location. Are we going to be improving the entrance to Hill Avenue, which is a private way? And what is going to be going on with the landscaping further past the site into the roadway? Um, you don't wanna put a class A site on a class C street type of analysis there. Um, the other question I did have for the applicant um, was for a schedule or sort of a route for their customers to be test driving these vehicles. Just where are they going? How are they getting out of the site? How are they coming back, et cetera, um, would be appreciated. Um, aside from that, um, we did send this out to comment to various departments. DPW did comment um, in regards to not only the stormwater, but in addition to more of the civil aspects in regards to the sewer and the water. Um, those have been addressed by the applicant. I'm waiting follow-up from the town engineer on those, and we should have them in ahead of the October 11th meeting. Um, staff, as mentioned before, did send this out to a peer review consultant. Um, they performed an analysis, uh, generated a report to the applicant. Um, the applicant responded to their report, um, and as of today, we received an updated report from the peer review consultant. If you don't mind, I'm just going to have the peer, cons peer review consultant, sure. uh, Mr. Diaz, come on up and just um, just introduce yourself and a brief overview of just the work that you performed and I guess highlighting anything that might be outstanding and if not, that's fine too. Absolutely. Uh, for the record, Eric Dias, registered professional engineer with Strong Point Engineering Solutions. Uh, we were hired to do a peer review of the stormwater design of this, so our scope of services is limited to that. Um, a bit of a unique project, I'll say, in that in the existing conditions, you have a sea of pavement that is really um, discharging untreated stormwater to a wet area. Um, so certainly a ton of opportunity for the applicant to make some improvements, which we feel that they have. Um, they've increased the amount of green space on the site, which is going to allow the site to recharge more water. Um, they've done a lot with water quality treatment. One of the things that we asked for in our first review was that they increase the amount of water quality treatment that they were providing to meet the bylaw requirements of 80%, and they did that. Um, I think our initial review had 16 comments, a couple of which were bylaw related, some of which were just minor plan typos. Um, they responded to us, we responded back. Uh, we're satisfied with all 16 comments. Um, highlighted in the report are two things that the board should be aware of. One is they're looking for a wa one waiver, um, and that waiver has to do with a section of your bylaw that requires that any overflow from the stormwater drainage system be directed to the control structure. Where they are not proposing a control structure, and I don't think it would be appropriate to do so in this case, it, that is a waiver that we would support. Um, and the other thing that they were asking for is one condition of approval. We had a comment that they are connecting to an existing pipe, a drainage pipe, um, with their stormwater system that they were not able to identify the slope on. My understanding is that that was because the down gradient structure is buried. So they simply asked that we let all well, the board allow them to mobilize equipment to the site and then confirm that, el that slope and elevation, which I think you know, we have evidence that the upgrading structure is certainly deep enough that they can connect to it without an issue. So I think that that was reasonable should the board um, choose to grant them that condition. Um, but other than that, we are satisfied with the review. Great. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. And I'll just remind the public that this is a public hearing. So if there is anyone um, in the audience who would like to come up and ask any questions or make any comments with regards to this application, please feel free to do so. Um, I'll, I'll keep an eye on people waiting in line for that, and uh, I'm gonna open it up to the board for their comments and questions. Member Makami, we'll start with you. Any comments or questions? Mm -hmm. uh, thank, you. thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I think the Assistant Director hit on two questions I was interested in. What's gonna happen with Hill Ave? Are there gonna be any improvements? Um, and then secondly, uh, test drives, how, how, will, how is that gonna operate? So he, he identified those. Um, and I guess I just ask our uh, consultant, so today, where's all the water going? Today everything's basically going to the ocean. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's basically just being discharged out to the ocean. There is a network of drainage structures out there that ultimately just daylight. 
uh, with very little treatment. So ultimately, things will still go to the same place, but because they've created green space, and the theory would be that they're sending less of it for one, and what is going there, at least from this portion of the site, will now be treated for TSS and oils and grits and things like that, where it otherwise today has very little opportunity for treatment on that site. Right. So normally, if the water just goes directly to the ocean, is that, is that a bad thing, or is it, you know, what is it? Well, it's, kind of, it's a little bit of a loaded question. The, the That's scale, why I asked <laughs> The scale, right, the ocean's huge. So when you discharge stormwater from a site like this to the ocean proper, it doesn't make a whole lot of an impact. But, you know, the state regulation, all the EPA regulations that are in place encourage cleanup of that water, right? Certainly if this was a smaller body of wetland, we might be even more concerned with what's going there now because it doesn't have an opportunity to dilute. So I think that there's certainly on the right track with their, with their design in cleaning that water before it is discharged to the ocean. Okay, so, um, you know, they've proposed open space plus the drainage systems. Um, are we gonna, are they gonna be able to process 100%, 90%, 80%? Yeah, and I'll, I'll let um, the applicant speak to it, but I believe their design, their closed drainage system is designed to handle a 25 year storm event. Um, and it is designed to handle the first inch of water quality from all impervious surfaces on the site, which is what's required under the bylaw, both state and local. Um, and then anything over a 25 year storm event that might presumably overwhelm the system, the closed drainage system, we would consider two things. One, that first flush, that first inch has already been accounted for and treated appropriately. So the rainwater that falls after that would be technically considered to be clean. And secondly, it would then, if it overwhelmed that 25 year storm event, say we got a 100 year event, anything above the 25 would continue along its natural flow course now, which is to the ocean. But at that point, it would have been kind of pre-cleaned, if you will. Right. Uh, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Yep. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Member Bakami. Member Croa, do you have any comments or questions? Oh, actually, if you don't mind. Um, Member Bakami, did you have uh, did you want to ask the applicant about the landscaping and Hall Ave? Because I don't think we got a chance on that response, or do you want to wait for the, comp I'll, I'll wait. the response? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Member Croha, sorry to interrupt. Thank, thank you. Uh, the only question I had, it could either be the applicant or staff, but the staff report and the application reference a modification of decision 1308. And I was just, I didn't see a copy. I was curious what that was, if that involved anything more than the gatehouse or if there was anything else to consider with that. No, that decision spoke exclusively to the gatehouse. We discussed okay. this back in August when the applicant was filing and we as staff directed to supersede that and have that tied in as part of this decision. Okay. Um, besides that, I didn't have any other questions. Thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, Member Grove, any comments or questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, the building appears to be mainly glass, Ms. Marin, that way, correct? Has any assessment been done on any reflective light that may cause a, a problem with the driving on Quincy Ave? I, I, I don't know the answer to that question, but I would imagine that the you product... You know, from the sun. Yeah, exactly. But I think the product is, you know, would be marketed so that it is... Uh, not causing that kind of uh, glare, but we can get you that answer. Okay. We'll, we'll find out from the architect, Thank you. you know, about the glass. And um, I will add that the building is going to present itself very nicely to that intersection coming from the north. Uh, it's because the pad is going to be elevated and then tapered. So um, the site will be raised. Uh, the staff report of uh, Mr. Murphy points out the cubic yards that will be imported to create the pad. Um, and then it'll, it'll look very nice from the street. Um, also, you know, I wanted to just uh, point out to the board, as you know, Mr. Quirk has properties that he's developed over the years, new buildings or renovated buildings at 280 Quincy Avenue, Quirkia. 372 Quincy Avenue, Cork Subaru, uh, 444 Quincy Avenue, 
Quirk Chevrolet, Quirk Pre-Owned, and now GMC Buick. And we were before the board earlier this year for Quirk Hyundai at 435 Quincy Avenue, and also Quirk Jeep uh, was constructed in 2015. And I have took some photographs today of the way that these buildings and the landscaping is maintained on that Quincy a Avenue corridor. And I'd respectfully submit to the board that it is these properties are among the most attractive, certainly, uh, in that corridor and maintained uh, impeccably by uh, the Quirk Company. So I'll just introduce these for the record, if I can. Thank you very much. Member Grove, did you have any other comments? Member Connolly, do you have any comments or questions? Um, no questions at this time, but the um, stormwater peer review was very helpful to the process. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Member Kent, any comments or questions? Uh, just, just one question. Uh, point, I think, in terms of shipyard, I think asbestos and all kinds of other bad things. Has that been looked at? And what, what happens when we start digging and what are we, what are we going to turn up? So when um, the shipyard was purchased uh, in 2003, um, there was capping, there was all sorts of environmental reports, and there, um, is, there were some existing obligations of other companies, but to my knowledge, all of that is, is certainly handled and has been capped for, for years on the property. Um, as far as asbestos goes, um, I don't know what the old blueprint building had that was used for the design of destroyers and so forth back when the shipyard had 50,000 workers and men and and they had uh, the security blinds and so forth on that building. Um, I can tell you that millions of dollars have been spent by um, the Quirk uh, companies, and I have some photos of that form of blueprint building. and. I would imagine that all of the abatement, if any, was necessary, was done properly because that's now uh, a beautiful uh, office building uh, on the Quincy side, which is occupied by a uh, mini submarine uh, company, uh, research and development company, and they occupy two floors of that, that office building. Uh, and I have photos of that that I'll, I'll introduce, but um, that, you know, that Everything that's been done out there has, from from any kind of abatement to environmental improvements, has has uh, occurred over the years. Okay, but it, if the if somebody had missed something and they needed to clean up another spot, that that would be part of the plan. Then that they would do that. Yeah, there's nothing that we know of um, in that area that would require any kind of uh, treatment um, at this site. So. Okay. Uh, you know, and 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 the rep I know that um, the the twenty one E reports were part of records that were available to the town back when we when when the Quirk companies purchased the the shipyard. So uh, you know, I I don't know of anything that would cause a be a cause of any concern. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Cameron Campbell with the Selberg Sala. Uh, Prior to doing any like digging for the foundation, we're going to go out there and do test borings for the foundation to get to see what's below it because you have to for the structural. So we'll be able to tell what's underneath the soil before it gets fully ripped up. And if anything's under there that's not good, we'll figure out beforehand and then it'll get cleaned up yep. the right way. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. This is the uh, office building that I'll just. If you want to hand it to Member Connolly, she has the stack there. Let's keep them together. Member Kent, did you have any other comments? Member Kent, are you all I'm set? All set. Thank okay, you. great. Um, so it sounds like um, I don't have any additional commentary. Um, I'm appreciative of our peer review consultant for um, the presentation this evening and helping us. Um, understand stormwater simply, so thank you for that. Um, it looks like this evening, um, is there anybody from the public who would like to come up? 
Um, not seeing anybody from the public, it looks like per staff recommendation that we would be looking to continue this to the October 11th meeting at 7.15, is that right? All right, so we just need a mo uh, does the applicant have anything? Um, could yeah. we um, ask for draft conditions at that time? Uh, yes, that would be, we will note that um, draft thank conditions. You. Yep, thank you. So we need a motion to continue this application to October 11th at 7.15. So moved. Uh, do we have a second by Member Grove? Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All right, we will see you, you October 11th. Thank you very much. Can you pass, did you get to look at these or pass them over? The next item on our agenda this evening is a continued public hearing for 131A Pond Street, file 22-07, a grading permit. Um, if the applicant wants to come up to the podium and get set up, and then when you're ready, we can get underway. Good evening, uh, member of the boards, and um, for the record, my name is Chi Man from Hardy Pestman Design Group. I'm the project civil engineer working on this project, represent uh, my client. Uh, she's also here tonight, Teresa Rania. Um, so we have presented this project to the board before. I I'm going to just do a quick rundown again, um, uh, not to waste too much of everyone's time. So the, the lot itself is a rear lot with no frontage and is served by a right of way from 131 Pond Street. It's a pre-existing non-conforming lot with the existing building there. Um, the right of way actually serves two, two separate lots in the rear, in the area. And the rear lot about the uh, Sunset Pond. So uh, what we are proposing is to uh, basically clean up the the backyard there, there is a, a two to one slope from the upper patio area that's uh, sloped right down to the beach at the uh, Sunset Pond level. Uh, very difficult for our clients to maintain uh, as far as, you know, um, and also um, causing a lot of erosion. She has to keep cleaning up all the time and manage that slope. So what she's proposing is to remove all the existing timber uh, wall on site and replace them with um, modular block, uh, concrete block wall. Um, because the existing, existing timbers, they are rotten out at this point and also the uh, existing wood stair that go down to the beach is also being rotted out. So, um, Basically, we are replacing the, the slope with uh, something more doable, um, modular block retaining wall to match the exist. There is a portion of the uh, block wall on site and the material is going to be matching the existing wall um, and create like a terrace um, two step down. So it's going to be help very helpful to maintain and also control the erosion that's happening on the site. Uh, the, the project has been granted a lot of conditions. Uh, I just picked it up today. It was, we had a hearing last week with the uh, Conservation Commissions. Um, and some minor uh, revision was made to the, to the plan. But, um, since the original submittals, um, the original submittals, we ha I, I basically read the uh, FEMA map wrong, the elevation, so based on the staff comment, we correct that and um, pull every, any, any fill within the uh, flood zone and just narrow down the, the terrace. And also with the staff comments from conservation, we added landscaping and this has been approved by the commissions. Um, I'm open for any questions. Great, thank you very much. Uh, I did review the, um, 
draft conditions. The draft conditions. Um, our clients has no issue with it. The only item we are asking if that can be waived is the um, one thousand dollar as for the as built because we are posing two thousand dollars to the conservation commissions for the as built. <laughs> so it's kind of double sorted. All right, we can discuss okay. that this evening. Um, if I could ask staff to just give an overview of what's transpired between last meeting and this meeting, and then I'll open it up to the board in public for comments. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, since the last meeting, the applicant submitted a revised plan uh, shortly before the last Conservation Commission hearing. Um, the applicant satisfied the comments made in the first staff report uh, based on the revised grading plan. Staff worked on draft conditions uh, for the grading permit. Um, those are attached with the staff report. Um, staff has no further comments at this time. Okay, great. And just a reminder, this is a continued public hearing. Um, so if there is anybody from the public who would like to come up and speak um, with regards to this application, please feel free to do so. Um, with that, I'll keep my eye out for that. And Member Makami, do you have any comments or questions with regards to this application? Yep. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Nothing really. I think um, it's pretty straightforward, commonsensical, and I believe um, that we went through last time that it was consistent with what other uh, neighbors and abutters to the lake are doing. Um, and I think that the assistant director has organized everything well. So um, this looks pretty straightforward to me. So thank you. Thank you, Member Makami. Member Croha, any comments or questions? Yes, thank everybody for the, the work on the project. The, the conditions had a completion date of April 2023. Is that enough time or would additional time be helpful with some um, of the plantings? I would have to ask my client. If you want to, if the, can you just, you just have to come up to the podium. I'm sorry about that. We're just recording it, so we want to make sure we get that. If you could just state your name for the record. Uh, sounds Teresa like you might Farina, be the homeowner 131A. Um, if it's not an additional problem, extra time's not a problem, but honestly, I think this will be completed before the end of this year. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That yeah. was my That's only question. Well. Yeah. It's just weather permitting at this point. She has three contractors toward the site yesterday getting quote um, pending on the on the permits. She's ready to start right away. Okay. That's all. Yes, thank you. Member Grove, do you have any comments or questions? Member Connolly, do you have any comments or questions? No? No, thank you. Member Kent, any comments or questions? No. Um, I don't have any further comment or question. Um, I guess with regards to the request by the applicant for potential waiver of the $1,000 bond for as-built, I'm not familiar um, with what the differences between our as-built bond and the Conservation Commission's as-built requirements are, so I don't know how appropriate it is. It seems reasonable, but um, is, do you have anything um, to add with regards to that or any advice on that? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. So two different boards, obviously. Um, they're going to have to require the same as-built plan for both boards, which are under jurisdiction of our department. Um, if the board's inclined to waive it, um, that's, that's fine. Uh, in standard practice, we ask the charity be posted so that we ensure the closeout of all projects. All right. Um Does any board members have any comments or thoughts on the waiving of the bond for the surety, given that there is there, can you confirm that there is a $2,000 surety bond that with the CONCOM permit? I have not seen the CONCOM permit. Uh, um, I have the other conditions here, <laughs> if you'd like to see. Yeah, I just checked yeah. them off, right? Just yeah. Today. Yeah. Okay, if you don't mind, actually, can I look at that one? Do you have it open to the surety?
So I do think, um, and I'll just pass this around real quick to the other board members. Um, they're not the exact same requirement. Um, the Conservation Commission as built does allow for a landscape architect or architect to complete the as built. Um, I think that the as built would need to be completed, um, I think most appropriately by a land surveyor given the proximity of the new wall to the property line. Um, so I don't know if it's, I don't know the best way to handle that. If I may, the, the requirements of the as bill would still be the same. It's just the question of do you want to have them pay the thousand dollars? Were you su suggesting a thousand? The thousand dollars um, or not? But it would still be the same. Yeah, yep. it would right. still be uh, the same requirements that we have in all of our decisions and stamped by a uh, PLS. Um, could I go ahead? Sorry. No, you should go. <laughs> My thought would be where there's already a monetary uh, encouragement to get it completed properly. I would, I would be on the side of waiving it. Yeah, I think as long if if it's possible to um, note the condition from the conservation commission approval in this, as opposed to stating that it's an additional surety. Perhaps we could still leave the requirements of the as built, but not require the surety as a suggestion. Um, all right, so do we need to do we need to vote on that revision, or can whoever's making a motion incorporate that revision? Whoever makes the motion can incorporate that. Okay, so. great. Um, is there anybody from the public who wishes to speak on behalf of this? Um, not seeing anybody. Um, we do have draft conditions that have been reviewed and discussed this evening, um, so it sounds like we'd be um, ready to make a motion on this application, but firstly, if we could get a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. A motion by Member Kent and a second by Member Grove. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? We need a motion to enter into the record correspondence through, um, I don't have that. Do you have the most recent date? Through September. through September 8th. A motion on that. So moved. A motion by Member Kent, a second by Member Grove. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All right, we can entertain a motion on this application. Motion to approve grading permit for file number 2207 with waiver of the monetary surety bond in condition 15. We have a motion by member Croa. Do we have a second? Second by member Grove. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All right, great. So that's pa that is granted. Thank you very much. The next item on our agenda this evening is another continued public hearing for 1070 Liberty Street, file number 22-06. Uh, this is also a grading permit. Uh, Joseph Hannon of Atlantic Coast Engineering is the applicant this evening. Um, if you'd like to come forward um, to the podium, we can get underway whenever you're ready. Good evening. Uh, for the record, Jed Hanna with Atlantic Coast Engineering. Uh, <clears throat> we previously appeared before you folks uh, back in August. Uh, this was for an after-the-fact grading permit. Uh, the homeowners wanted to put in a retaining wall. They weren't privy to the uh, bylaw regulations with respect to cuts and fills and the retaining wall. Um, and in the last hearing, uh, basically the, the guidance, the conclusion from staff and the planning board was to come up with a, a revegetation plan, which we did. Uh, we, we pulled in Brad Holmes, professional wetland scientist 
from ECR, and he prepared the revegetation plan along with you know input from the homeowner. Um, and uh, I know Connor Murphy met with the homeowner out there uh, to review the revegetation plan. Um, so we had Brad Brad Holmes put that together. You should have that there in front of you. Um, it's very thorough and detailed. Um, if you have any if you have any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer those. Brad unfortunately was not available to attend tonight, um, but the layout should be pretty straightforward. We did review some of the comments from the from the last set of review comments that the staff put together and that you folks uh, had from the last meeting. I can run through that. There was a uh, issue with the datum, the elevation datum. We adjusted that on the revised plan. Uh, there was a concern over the, the clearness of the erosion detail, which um, we had reprinted. I have a copy. Um, that's really it. There were some minor items that need to be addressed, which I, I just explained, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Um, if I could ask staff for an overview um, and just a summary of the most recent staff report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, staff reviewed the revised grading plan and the submitted revegetation plan, uh, in addition to meeting with the homeowner on site. Um, the in years past, I've worked with this homeowner um, since when they first bought it, probably a little bit before 2019. Um, they had interest in, in doing certain things with their property prior to the pandemic. Um, so, the, you know, they're a new family moving to Braintree. They're looking to, you know, revitalize this this corner lot. Um, just looking at the building permits, they've they've you know provided a significant reinvestment into this property. Um, this sort of goes along with their plan. Um, they're not too familiar with, you know, changes in grade as most branchy homeowners are. So they were aware of the need for a grading permit. Um, I did discuss the vegetation with them. I said, you know, there was, there was a lot of vegetation removed. Um, they cited that there were a lot of dead trees and overgrown vegetation that was affecting the structure that was on the lot. Um, and that was part of their removal. Um, so they said they do have plantings that they want to do. Um, they worked on the revegetation plan, which was submitted to you. Um, the only comment staff has on the revegetation plan is the proposed arborvitaes along the front portion of the parcel. Um, typically, those are supposed to be spaced out between six inches and a foot, and it's supposed to be staggered in order to properly screen whatever you're planting them on. These are spaced out a little bit further. So as they grow and as they mature, they're just gonna look like standalone trees, which isn't the best aesthetic look. Um, staff had respectfully suggested that the applicant continue the white birch, which is proposed at the corner of the driveway, and install two more white birches within the middle of the front yard um, as part of your vegetation plan, rather than having to install the arborvitaes to offer that corner lot aesthetically pleasing site. Um, aside from that, staff did prepare draft conditions for this meeting um, for the board to consider. Great, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, if I could ask the applicant, um, if you had, did have a chance to review the comment from staff with regards to the arborvitaes versus the birch trees in the front yard, did you have a chance to review that with the homeowner or do you have any comment on whether or not that would be something they'd consider? Sure, I did uh, talk to the homeowner. Um, and Brad actually, and they prefer to keep the layout as is, as long as the planning board's okay with that. They feel as though they will fill out over the, the years. There may be some gaps, but um, it's their best, you know, efforts to try to, you know, shield and provide some privacy. Okay. Um, and just a reminder, this is a continued public hearing for the packed crowd we have this evening. Member Makami, do you have any comments or questions? Sure, thank you. Um, I think, you know, when the last time we met, we decided we give the homeowners guided by you uh, the opportunity to, re to review all the items. I, I would say that given the fact that 
Um, they removed a number of trees. I don't know how many. I mean, Member Kent drives by there all the time. He, he might know the count. Uh, but, um, you know, that, that lot is pretty visible. Um, I, I know that they did the work knowingly or unknowingly um, without a permit. And I think the staff's comments are um, pretty spot on. Um, I, I, I can respect what the homeowners are thinking, but I'm, my personal opinion is I'm going to side with the staff. And I think that they really re, um, need to rethink this, given all that they have done basically illegally. Um, and we're asking them for, for a, a little bit of leeway on this. So my my uh, personal observation is that um, I think the assistant director is correct and I would go with his version and not theirs. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Member McCommy. Uh, Member Kokoa, any comments or questions? Uh, thank you. From my perspective, looking at it and considering that the landscaping is only part of the question because of the grading. Uh, we did leave it flexible and I feel like what's been produced does include quite a bit of vegetation to where I would be fine with the plan. I'm, I don't have an overly strong feeling one way or another, but I, I do feel like the plan was a good presentation also. Thank you. Member Kent, do you have any comments or, or Member Grove? You guys are like back and forth. Um, no comments or questions? Uh, Member Connolly, any comments or questions? I do. Um, to follow up with Member Makami's comments, um, I, I think that the uh, arborvitae should be um, placed as staff as detailed for them. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I have none. <laughs> Great. Um, I just had a question with regards to um, curve of the at the corner of Liberty and Forest Street. Um, I don't see it on the survey. I see it in like Google Street View. It looked like there was some vegetation around it. Is that um, I haven't had a chance to drive by the site recently, but is that wall um, is that wall still there? That that stone wall. The front portion of the yard. Uh, in the, at the corner. At the corner. Uh, I don't believe so. That was removed. Yeah. Do we know if that was um, a historic stone wall that might have had property line um, significance? Um, was that discovered as part of the survey work? That wasn't. I... So unfortunately, you know, we were pulled in after the fact. Um, we, we weren't aware of that being in place. Uh, so I frankly don't know. And then there is the stone wall shown on the survey that starts on the other side of the driveway as you um, go up Forest Street. Is that, I'm presuming, since the survey work that you did does show that stone wall, that was the stone wall that you were able to, that's still there, that portion. Correct. Yes. Correct. Well, that's too bad. Um, I was going to say that I, the tree planting should just be careful to preserve that stone wall. Um, as oftentimes, those are some of the few monumentations we have in Braintree when survey monumentation is hard to rediscover. Some of those stone walls are historically significant and I think um, not related specifically to this project, but I think the town should be um, very cognizant of preserving survey monumentation um, and that sort of historical um, documentation that's irreplaceable in some ways. Um, so that's, um, I'm very disappointed, but I understand that that's not this um, particular engineer consultants. Um, it had happened after they were a part of it. Those are my only comments with regards to the plantings. Um, I don't have anything to add with regards to the arborvitaes or birch trees, although I will um, support staff in their recommendations since they are um, the experts on that. Um, so there is no public um, that I can see that would come up to speak on behalf of this application. So um, 
I think we could have a motion to close the public hearing if somebody would like to move. There you go. Uh, motion by Member Kent. Do we have a second? Sure. <laughs> Member Grove says sure. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? We have correspondence um, to enter into the record, um, and that would be through the date of September 12th. A motion to enter into the record correspondence. So moved. Motion by so. Member McCommie, second by Member Grove. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. Um, Chair will entertain a motion on this um, item. Um, Madam Chair, just a point of clarification. Um, so if there is an issue between, you know, different types of plantings, how, how does that get resolved in the end? As of now, they have a submitted plan which highlights the arborvitaes. Um, if the board's inclined, they could propose a motion to have the revegetative plan added or revised um, to include the white birch trees in the front without the arborvitaes. Okay. So if somebody would like to make a motion on this, um, perhaps you can include um, the preferred language you would like for that and we can see if it gets seconded and voted through. Well, we can propose it, but I, what I'd like to do is just ask the staff what, what they would prefer. Uh, given that it is a corner site, I would strongly encourage the white birch within the front yard rather than the arborvitaes uh, kind of in a row along Liberty Street. That would be, that's my recommendation, would be for the two white birch trees in the front. Okay, based on that, I'm, I'm gonna make uh, an, a, a motion to amend the conditions that we change the vegetation plan. So we have a motion by Member McCommie um, to approve it with the revision by staff on yes. the vegetation. And Member Grove, did you second that? All right, so we have a motion by Member McCommie and a second by Member Kent. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, so that is um, the decision this evening. Um, I guess you can follow up with staff if you have any questions. Sure, <clears throat> excuse me, sure. So just for clarification, um, the plan's approved as is subject to receipt of the revised vegetation plan, making that adjustment? Correct, the plan, yeah, we approved basically our landscaping plan <clears throat> taking into account that revision requested by staff. That was what was approved. Sure, Great. thank you. Thank you very much. The next item on our agenda. No, we didn't, we didn't, oh, we didn't pass this, did we? Yes, we did. Oh, we did? We okay, did. okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next item on our agenda is Town Council Order 22-012. Zoning Ordinance Text Amendment. This is a continued public hearing again. Um, and I do understand that this um, item is going to be continued um, until the October 11th meeting at 7.15. So we just, did you want to add anything? Uh, we can just take a, make a motion and vote. I on know, that. just it, just getting ready if there was any questions because okay, I was okay. kind of okay. offline here for a okay. while working on some other things, multitasking. Um, so just a motion to continue this to October 11th at 7.15. So moved. Thank you. Uh, second? Do we have a second? Second by Member Grove. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All right. We'll see that on our October agenda. And I believe that's it. Um, we do have on our agenda in the old new business approval of meeting minutes for the June meeting. Those are not ready yet, so we will um, look at those at our next meeting. And with that, I think we can do a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Great, we have a motion by Member Grove and a second by second. Member Kent. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Madam Chair. Could it help you?